Okay, today I interview one of our students that has videos that have gotten over 20 million views and how she went from playing small to superstar status. If you wanna be a superstar, this is the video to watch. Hey, 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 what is up, what's happening? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Super excited for this interview. She was in our uh, mastermind program a few years ago and and I just just knew from the first minute talking to her that she had so much more potential that she hadn't yet hit and that she was going to crush it. She's going to step into her her greatness and it's been really cool watching that happen. And I think that, you know, hearing her journey will really help you with yours. You know, you have greatness within you as well and hearing uh, you know how she pivoted and how she you know, stepped into just superstardom, you know, because she was very uncertain when I, I first, you know, met her, despite the glaring evidence that she was a rock star. Um, and I think that a lot of us live like that. You know, uh, I had, you know, people that helped me along the years uh, realize that within me. If you would like to know what are the steps to go from uh, fear and uncertainty to superstar status with my Special guest, total rock star, uh, literally renowned around the world now. Help me welcome Miss Christina Whiteley. Christina, how are you? I'm good, thank you. And so, Christina, so uh, thank you so much for for being on here. Uh, it's just been really cool. I see that you're been getting interviewed on on different podcasts and. I think TV shows now and like all kinds of stuff. It's just really cool. You left uh, Canada. You're living in Mexico now, I believe. Um, and so let's start with how did you get introduced to network marketing? Like, let's let's start there. Okay. Okay, cool. So um, I was a hairstylist. I owned a salon and on-site wedding business and I loved doing hair. Um, but there was a piece that was missing. You know, I could only help people so much. It was really great to give them a great color and a cut or make them look beautiful on their wedding day. But I wanted to be able to give back more than that. And, and it was the piece of building people's confidence. That's what I fell in love with, was building people's confidence in themselves and seeing a shift in, in how they viewed themselves. And so um, I, late into my pregnancy with my daughter, who's almost seven now, uh, I had a really bad shoulder injury and couldn't continue working. I was in so much pain and, and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got a baby on the way. I have no options. I don't know what to do. And I saw this girl that was on social media and I'd known her from years prior working in the bar. She'd come in once in a while and, and she was a house cleaner and she was sitting at the beach with her kids making five figures a month. And now I know that that is not normal, but it's something I was willing to work for. It was something I was willing to drop everything and go all in and figure it out because I wanted her life. I wanted to be present for my daughter. I wanted to be at birthdays and barbecues on the weekend and not working weddings. I wanted to be the person that could go camping with her or go on family adventures. So it's no surprise to me that we've landed here in Cabo San Lucas and, and that we've created a life here. Um, but that vision was always there. And I knew that if I just kept focusing on a solution that I'd figure it out. That's so cool. Just to read through the lines here. So you connected with this person that you knew, you saw her living it up on social media. You connected with her, joined her business, you know, rock, rock being <laughs> then I met you. No. Um, so I, yeah, so I, I went through the process. I called her over. I said, what are you doing? I had no experience, no education, no skill set. Like I didn't even have an Instagram profile, didn't have any of that. And I was just like, I'm willing to do what it takes to change things here. So can you teach me your ways? Um, and, and you know what? She, she brought me into a business that taught me that I could make more money uh, than just paying my bills because that's how I was raised. Like you get a job to pay your bills. Um, she right. helped me dream dream bigger because I saw what was possible for an average human being. And I thought, well, if she can do it, I can do it. Um, and it helped me evolve into uh, someone who wanted to use leadership to help people in this area. Because I think that so often people come into this business and maybe uh, they're throwing stuff at the wall and sees like to see what sticks. Right. And, and they don't have that that guide or that mentor. Um, and, and to me, building business with people was fun. Like, I was like, this is a way that I can help people and impact them and change their lives. And I've gone on to see that. I've seen people's lives evolve. And that's why I continue to do this business. But it was something that I, I knew that if I started people at the very basic level, like, 
to, but to build a business, you usually need like tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. This was a very low um, bar to entry. And so I knew that I could help people that really, truly needed a change. I mean, look at the economy right now. People absolutely need this industry. And so I knew that I could make an impact at the most basic level and help them you know, evolve their lives and do something different. And so you said that you own that hair salon. Like, what was that startup cost like? Was this like oh. a couple hundred bucks or what? Yeah, a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> um, no, it was a few. It was a few thousand, like maybe a few tens of thousands. Um, but yeah. you know, and and I did it cheaply too. Like I, we we always joke that we made an income out of our homes. Like we always turned our homes into a business. And so we had two Airbnb units in our basement. We had my salon out of the out of the main floor with our living area, and then we had our room and our bedroom and stuff above. So like we we were running the house like a business, oh, okay. um, and you know like asked my husband if that was something that he really preferred, and I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but it was the best option for us because I could be at home with my baby, I could be at home right. with my husband, I could spend more time with them. And here's the kicker. I watched other people leave the salon that we were at and start their own business. Just like I came home to start my own business and eventually evolved it and had about 20 people working with me doing weddings. Um, but he started his own business and had, you know, nine, 10, 11 employees. And I was working four days a week and he was working seven and his headache was way bigger than mine because he was dealing with all of the issues of his staff and all of these big overhead costs in his salon. But we were both taking home about the same amount of money. I just worked way less. And so I realized I'm done trading dollars for hours, right? The cost of business kept going up and up and up and up. And I, and I was making less money and I didn't want to work 80 hours a week. I wanted to leverage my time so that I could spend more time with my kids because look, I think we're in a place where we need to redefine what luxury is, right? Luxury isn't like fancy handbags and expensive shoes and nice clothes, right? Luxury is time freedom and financial freedom. And if you learn how to create that, then you get to live a luxurious lifestyle. It's not like you dig and dig and dig and try and work as fast as you can to live luxuriously. Like you can actually create that lifestyle around who you are and what you want to do. Yeah. A amen. I mentioned when we first started working together that I could just tell that you had a lot of doubts and things like that. Why do you think that is? Or do you, do you know? Hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting because at the time I could, I, I, you know, I knew I was, I was raised in a household where, um, you know, my parents wanted us to be seen and not heard, but in a good way, like they wanted the best for us. They wanted us to be um, self, self-sufficient. They wanted us to be successful, but kind of on their terms, right. On like what was safe. And I, I understand that because, um, you know, we were sold this dream of you go to school, you get good grades, you go to university, you get a degree, then you get a well-paying job with a pension and healthcare, and then you live out the rest of your days until you can retire. Except for, I didn't want to retire on a fixed income. I was like, that doesn't sound like a very good deal. Like, I don't want that life. Um, and, and so that was a piece of it. But the other piece was I was bullied from about grade two on, like mm. until I graduated. And like, fully to the point that like, I felt my life was at risk at some point. Mm. Um, and, and it was really challenging because I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't understand why people um, were trying to, you know, take me down a notch. I didn't get that that light was there, the light that you saw. Sometimes we don't get to see our own light. And, right. and I was really just adjusting to that. And so when I met you, I knew that I'd gone through trauma. I knew that I'd gone through bullying. I knew that I'd given up uh, my dreams at the time because I didn't feel worthy of them, but I was willing to fight through it. And sometimes you meet people like yourself and other amazing mentors that I've had in my life that gave me a glimmer of hope that showed me something in myself that I didn't see. Like, I'm so grateful for you and for you for fighting for me and for, you know, and for being, you know, my cheerleader when I didn't believe that I could do it because I, I, I didn't have that money mindset. And as I started to shift that, I was like, I'm working so hard, but the, the, the product or, you know, my goals, like those things are not showing up. And I kept digging in and I remember this conversation and this will come around full circle because I remember you saying to me, Christina, you work so hard. Like you work harder than most people. He's like, you just, like you said, you, you deserve a Hollywood deal. And I, I'll never forget you saying that because I was like, I do deserve a Hollywood deal. Like I do work really hard <laughs> and it just took a little bit of time for that to show up. <laughs> and I don't, I don't say that to everyone. I, I just, it's not like a line that I, that right. I, knew. I, just, I just, it just, it just made sense, you know, for time. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's so cool. I was just on a podcast just like, you know, 30 minutes ago 
And, you know, one thing that came up is Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For me, I know that me going through abuse is what equipped me to sit at the table of tables that are very meaningful of, you know, to, you know, talk with troubled teenagers, to talk with depressed people, to talk with, you know, kids in foster care, you know, et cetera. And so, you know, you were equipped with that seed to really understand how does the person feel that's been bullied. And so, and, and, you know, you mentioned that it was great to have, you know, me, you know, believe in you, but you did the work. And, and a lot of time, like my belief in someone can't force them to do the work. Right. They got to do the work. Right. right. You know, if my personal trainer really believes in me, but I don't do sit ups, then go and be flabby. That's just <laughs> the way it is. And and so like that's it's you know, it's important. I obviously I appreciate appreciate the edification. But, you know, you did the work. You did the uncomfortable work. You did the stuff that you weren't you didn't want to do. You did the stuff when you felt like quitting. You like you kept showing up. And that's such an important point to really hammer home. Because if we don't, then some people will draw the conclusion of, I just need someone to believe in me. And, and the truth is, you were doing the work before me. You were doing a lot of work. And so, you know, it's just that, that little chemical injection of with work plus this, now you're, you know, rocking and rolling. So talk, talk a little bit about, um, <laughs> I know that uh, during the uh, uh, pandemic, uh, you you made a move. Um, yep. and so like, tell me, tell me a little bit about that. You know, it's so interesting. Um, and I'm so grateful for, for COVID. I'm so grateful for how this all played out because we probably wouldn't have had the courage or the inclination to move like we did. Uh, and but so, the pain, you know, the pain wouldn't have been as high. Am I right? That's right. That's yeah. right. Amen. It and was so tolerable that's until <laughs> it, it was, wasn't. It was until it wasn't. And like, that's, that's the thing, like, that's part of the work, right? Like you talk about the work that we did. Like I went to counseling. I dug into my pain points. I dug into the base, the root cause of why I was behaving a certain way or, you know, why I was procrastinating or why there were conversations I wasn't having. And so when you do that hard work and do the self-reflection and improve, all of a sudden you have confidence from a different area inside of you that is willing to null and blank out all of the noise so that you can make decisions based on who you are. And so when the pandemic hit, you know, um, our, our lives shifted, everybody, like, I don't think anybody got out of that situation unscathed. I think, you know, there's a lot of uh, upheaval and, and a lot of time to reflect on what was really important to us. And we had made a decision very early on. My daughter was in public school for a couple of months. She was in French immersion. And very early on, I was like, this and is wait, And where, where were you? I know you're in Canada. Oh, right? where, where were you in Canada? Uh, Vancouver Island, British okay. Columbia. So we were there and, and very quickly I realized this wasn't the best environment for, for our daughter and, and my husband agreed with me. And, and the other piece of it is that I also went through two miscarriages that year. We were trying mm. to have another baby. Mm. Um, I didn't have a lot of medical attention. I didn't have any in-person appointments. I had to go through those miscarriages at home by myself. There are like details that mm. I will spare you, but like just the experience wow. I had with lack of support. Um, and what people don't tell you is that you can also get postpartum even after a miscarriage and not having a baby. And so I had, I had uh, anxiety and depression and then postpartum and it all kind of balled into, I'm not okay. And I, I remember that moment going home in August of 2021 and my mom's and my sister was about to have a baby and I was so happy for her, but I was also like in my own pity party, you know? And so I remember standing in her backyard crying and I'm just like, mom, I'm not okay. I don't know what to do, but I'm not okay. And, um, and, and my husband heard that conversation and then, you know, the school thing happened and he just realized like, we need to do something different for our mental health. We need to do, he, he offered, um, you know, Mexico as a solution and a, and a break from our lives for a few months so that we could get a balcony view of what we were actually going through. And I, I know now that he offered that because he cared so deeply about me and wanted to save me. Yeah. So um, I'm very, very grateful. Like, I'm so grateful that he had the foresight to do that. But none of that would have been possible without network marketing. None of that would have been possible if we hadn't dug into the hard stuff and done the work 
you know, and I'm just that piece of it. I'm so grateful for. So we were able to pick up, we were able to come down here. We will, we're able to make decisions. Like we were joked, we'd make every, decisions for every 90 days. Like, what are we going to do next? And then we decided we were going to sell the house. And then we decided we we're going to buy a house down here. And then we decided, okay, like, let's do this for a few years and like, see what's next. But that's the beautiful thing about building a life for yourself <clears throat> is that you just need to know what the next right step is for you right now. That's Amen. what it comes down to. And did, uh, everyone agree with your decision to leave? Well, here's the thing, you know, like we kind of made a last minute decision. There was like some stuff going on and we're like, okay, like let's just book this last minute and go. And we said to our families, like we thought, okay, we'll come down for three to six months. But we started like with the three month thing with our families <laughs> instead of the six months. And then like, as things evolved, you know, we just, the truth is that we needed to make decisions for ourselves and we didn't want any counsel. We needed to make those decisions based on who we are, what we wanted for our family and not be influenced by others. So it did become a little uncomfortable with our families when we told them we we're going to sell the house. We're going to buy a house down here. You know, like it was just like evolutionary. But we also when we came down here, we told Izzy we were coming for 10 days. And then we're like, oh, then we're going to stay for Christmas. Now we're going to stay for your birthday. Like, So we just kept pushing it out, right? Um, but I'm so grateful that we had the opportunity to do that because now, now that people have um, kind of relaxed about the idea of, in our lives, our friends and family, like they're so happy for us. They see how happy we are here. They're starting to come visit us now and say, wow, like you guys do have it figured out. You know, my, my in-laws were here. They're in their early seventies. They're here in January for my husband's birthday. And my mother-in-law said point blank. She's like, I get why you're here. She's like, I feel safer here than I do in downtown Victoria or Vancouver in Canada. Wow. I feel safer living here. And a lot of people worry about that. That's the biggest thing, right? Your safety. But when right. your intuition is guiding you, when you know, you've know you got a mission in your heart and the impact and God is protecting you, like you don't have anything to worry about. Wow. Amen. Amen. I love that. What advice would you give to someone on here that knows they have more in them but they, they just aren't mustering the courage. They're just not doing the work. They're not consistent. Um, they know they're meant for great things, but they're just not showing up. What would you, what would you, what advice would you give them or what maybe tips or wisdom or help helped you? You know, I want to I want to honor that space because we've all had a heck of a few years. Right. I really want to honor when people feel that way. Um, I have done my due diligence in surrounding myself with people that are um, highly skilled and motivated people that can keep me on the right path and help me um, when I feel challenged so that I don't get stuck because that's the worst part, right? So surrounding yourself with a really good group of people, like having a team, if you're somebody that wants to be a high performer, you got to have people around you that are going to support you. If you've got leaks in the bucket or people are poking holes at what you're doing or constantly negative, then that isn't good for your mindset. And right. so it really truly is digging in and doing the work and the work that you do on yourself, the personal development that you do for yourself is the most important work out of it all because that courage definitely comes before you have confidence. That courage has to be something that you're like, I am committed to doing this until I get the result that I want. And what if, what if it did work out better than you ever thought? What if it did work out that you could live the life that you wanted on purpose? What if it did work out and you were the person that got to be the top earner in your company and that you changed the lives of thousands of other people? And often when we're thinking, I just can't do it, I just can't show up, you're not thinking about the people that you can help. You're thinking about how you feel in the moment. And whenever I feel like crap, I go out and I get some exercise, I get my heart beaten and like get sweaty. I'm like, we can do hard things. And that's something I teach my daughter. We can do hard things, right? And then I'm like, okay, what is next? What's the next step that I need? Or what do I need to heal so that I can move forward and help people? What do I need to put into play so that I show up and I lead? Because a lot of the times leaders will get into a position where they just start talking and start coaching and they stop doing the work. And right. the truth is the only way that you can lead is by doing the work and by showing up that way, because you are the example. You can't motivate anybody. You can inspire them through example, but you can't motivate them to do anything. Right. Amen. Uh, reminds me of um, one of the verses in Proverbs 26. It says, uh, the lazy man buries his hand in the bowl, but it wearies him to grow to bring it back to his mouth. And so that's the starter, not the finisher. That's a person that knows what they want, but they just won't finish, right? They'll they'll plan, but they just won't finish. 
And by not bringing the, you know, the hand back to your mouth, you're not bringing it to anyone else's mouth either. And, yes. and so, you know, knowing what you want is great. Uh, and you use the word until, right. Um, you know, and you either, you know, you do it until, and you either have to become so tough that those around you cannot affect your energy or you need to change those around you. And, yeah. you know, one, one or the other, possibly, you know, both. Um, tell me a little bit, cause, um, you know, you're very kind to edify, you know, me helping you along the journey. Mm -hmm. I know you also got some help from, uh, one of our, uh, inner circle coaches, uh, Jenny mm -hmm. Potter. Uh, tell me yes. a little bit about how she helped you. Gosh, is she ever a blessing? Let me tell you. Oh, she's so amazing. I met Jenny at your event and it was so yep. interesting last October. We just kept crossing paths like all the time. And we sat down for lunch and then we did the, I was like, you are meant to be in my life. I already knew that. And then I found out she literally lived like two and a half hours from our place on Vancouver Island. I was like, oh, you're really meant to be in my life then. And so we started talking and, you know, I heard her speech at your event and how she helped you. And I was like, man, I feel like that's the, that's the anchor. And so often you can be working and working and working and working and working towards something, but there's an anchor that is subconscious because I've learned a lot over the last few years and look, 5% of what you do is your conscious mind, but 95% is your unconscious mind. And yeah. if that unconscious mind is still running a story in the background, then you're never going to move forward. And so as soon as I met Jenny and she got home. I was like, Hey, I want to book some sessions with you. Like, I want to figure this out because I know how I show up is powerful, but I know that there's something blocking me from that. And it was fascinating to go through the process with her um, and, and get rid of some of these blocked emotions that I had in my life things that were hereditary, that were passed down generation to generation to generation, right? And what was really fascinating is subconsciously, I unlocked something working with her. And so mm -hmm. I started showing up differently. And if you ask anybody that's worked with me for the last seven years and ask them what's gone on in the last couple of months, they're like, dude, how you show up right now is unbelievable, right? Like how you're showing and up. And talk about energy. that. We, we haven't yeah. really talked about that. Like, talk about these interviews and let's talk about what, what are some sure. of the breakthroughs you've had here? Cause in the last couple of months, that's exactly what's happened. Yeah. And so um, one of the things that I didn't speak super openly about was moving to Mexico because I wasn't ready for the feedback. Now I don't care. Like you tell me what you want. doesn't matter. Trust me. I've heard it worse on social media. So, um, you know, I, I was, I, I didn't talk about it wholeheartedly as if I was like really excited about it because I didn't want to hurt people in my life. Right. I didn't want to make any sure. people feel less than or maybe they couldn't do what we were doing. And so they're like, oh, good for you. Right. I didn't want any of that energy. <laughs> right. It's true. And so what happened when we released this is I just started showing up. I started talking about why we moved. And the, a video that I did very shortly after working with Jenny on the second session with her uh, went viral. And so it's had like bet between all platforms and all these other videos, like close to 20 million views, which wow. is insane. Um, and the craziest stuff started showing up. So there was an article or somebody reached out to me from The Mirror, which is like People Magazine in the UK. I didn't even yeah. know. I had no idea that that's how big the publication was. And so she reached out and did an article about our family moving and us choosing to go debt free and live our life down here a lot more simply. And then I had uh, the Mexico News Daily reach out. I'm now a, a regular columnist and a columnist in their in their uh, in their publication, which is really cool because it's the biggest English speaking news in Mexico. There's a million subscribers and they're growing every day. Um, so that was really cool. And now I just got uh, a message a couple of days ago from somebody in global news in Canada that wants to do a story about us leaving and coming down here. And, and so like all, <laughs> even the Canadians, <laughs> even the Canadians get it, you know? And so it's like, it's so interesting um, because what happened from all of this is like, not only did I get a job where I get to connect, connect with like-minded people, like, here's the thing. I was going at it the wrong angle, right? And so ex exploding on social media, I've got all these people in my inbox. What do you do for a living? But let me tell you something. For years, I've been talking about making money online, like for years and like multiple streams of income. This is what you do. This is how you should grow a business. This is how you become financially free, right? So I've been doing that for years, but I was going through the wrong door. I was trying to go through the front door of the house and say, this is what you need. This is what you need. But people couldn't put themselves in the same position because it was too big of a gap. It was too big of a gap, the life that we were living versus what they were living. And what they really wanted 
was the first step at their basic instinct. How could I serve them? Well, if you want to move to Mexico, the first thing you do is make an appointment with the Mexican consulate in your area, right? And then the second thing you want to figure out income. And then the third thing, where do you want to live? Right. And so I had to break it down. And and the way that I described it to Jenny at the time was like, I've been trying to break down the door of my own house. I've been trying to break down the door. Like the door was locked. I keep banging on the door. Nobody's home. And I didn't realize if I just stepped a few feet to the right and slid open the sliding glass door that I could walk in and that everybody would be there and receptive and wanting to know what we do and, and wanting help. All the people that I was looking for, all the people that are already pre-qualified and are like, I'm ready to work for it. They're right there, but I was having the wrong conversation. And, and, And that opened up since working with Jenny. And I realized I've got to show up powerfully more differently i've got to show up like a leader right now because people need leadership and guess what this is going to be a more difficult year i'm going to be transparent this is going to be a little bit more difficult for people building business but those of us that are willing to dig in get good hone your skills the world is ours right now and as there's a redistribution of wealth you want to be on that side of the coin right now and that's what i'm a huge advocate of amen i love it it's um you know it's kind of like when network marketers pitch, um, hey, you want to be financially free? And <laughs> it's like, what? Like they don't, people don't even understand what the hell you mean. And, yeah. or you want to go full time? You know, like, uh, it's like, you know, that's, that's too much. It's too big of a leap. We don't understand what you're saying. Um, one thing that, that came up for me is, um, you know, now, now you're, you're open to, you know, sharing your story and everything. Um, just, you know, one thing to remember and those on here as well is, you know, us, us not wanting others to feel bad about a blessing that we've had will keep us from living the life of our dreams. One thing to remember is people are cool with your ups if they're aware of your downs. Right. And so, it, you know, you always like any time I share some a win, I'm sharing what I overcame and, you know, and, and you you've overcome a lot. Right. And and so um, I think that, you know, just a powerful you know, reminder for those those on here that, you know, it's OK to celebrate your wins when you do talk about what you've overcome. Talk about what you've been through. Talk about, you know, that it wasn't all roses and it hasn't all been easy and it wasn't an overnight success. So talking about the years of work, talking about the you know different struggles and, and things that, that you've had is really powerful. Um, so, man, it's just awesome. I just I love what you're doing. Um, super, super cool to see you just shining and famous now. And you know, <laughs> That's crazy. Well, right. Uh, but like and like, can I also just say real quick, like when I met you, I was going through a lot of personal growth, a lot of development in that in that space. And I actually end up having to evolve out of a company into a new one. Right. Yeah. And so, like, I don't want people to think that this isn't like a straight line to success because I worked for it. Oh no, the bullying when I was a kid qualified me for what I went through when I left that network marketing company and moved into a new company. Yeah, I got bullied. Yeah, you you got bullied, which is so, I was like, see, now do you know what I'm dealing with? Like, this is crazy, (laughs) right? And so I was like, you know, what you have to go through. We also went into debt when I when I switched companies because yeah. our bills were up here and I had to rebuild my income, right? So yeah. we also went through debt. We went through the struggle. We went through all of those things. When we moved to Mexico, we went through the same thing. When that video with has like 20 million people that have viewed it, like there was a lot of hate on that video too. And I remember oh, yeah. I messaged you, right? Because not everybody is going to see life your way. Not everybody is going to see it that way. And guess what? You do have to be strong enough to realize that not everyone is on the same page as you and not everybody wants the best for you and for your mission. So you have to hold that true to your own heart. You have to. Yeah. I mean, you have to remember, like, people can only operate at what frequency they're at. And, you know, if someone is self-loathing and and truly hates themselves, they, they, they just can't celebrate you. And you trying to make someone that that hates their life to like and celebrate you is is is, is for your thing. accomplishments, right? For your yeah. accomplishments, you yeah, want them not, to be happy it's, for it's you. It's not going to happen. No. Um, and no. so, super super cool. Well, thank you. Drop some love. Drop some gratitude for Christina, who's just amazing, and she's just overcome so much, and just such a great story. Getting a lot of love in the comments, and uh, just really appreciate you. And if you know that that you could use some help, right? Because, you know, Christina, very much like my story, 
I had a lot of people outside of me that helped me locate the things I, I just couldn't see. And, and so if you know that you need help in that regard, I would encourage you check out rayhigdoncoaching.com. We have several different options. I have group coaching that I do uh, every month nowadays. Um, and so we have some different options. Fill out the information if you'd like at rayhigdoncoaching.com. Give Christina some love. She's amazing. She was doing the work and she just kept doing the work, kept doing the work, kept showing up. And now she's having major breakthroughs and just the dream life. So congrats to you. Thank you, my friend. Take care. Congrats on making it to the end of the video. I hope you got massive value from this. Feel free to subscribe. And I would highly suggest that you click that little bell Bing. so that you're notified as we upload new and free content. Feel free to share this with someone that you think could benefit from it. And just know that we really, really appreciate you. Feel free to check out the description for any kind of links or additional notes. And I hope to see you in the next video.